والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره نعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها فان كل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وانما توعدون لات وما انتم بمعجزين praise allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's the only one worthy of praise i seek his help his guidance and his forgiveness i believe in him and i trust him I seek refuge in Almighty Allah from the evil of our passions. Indeed, whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides him to Al-Islam, no one can mislead him after Allah. And whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put him astray, no one can guide him after Allah. I testify, O believe, that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah Rabbil Alameen. And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his messenger and the seal of all the prophets. O Muslims, you must know that the best speech is the speech of Almighty Allah, which is the Quran. The best guidance is the course of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, which is his Sunnah. The words of all affairs is innovation and addition to the religion of Islam. Indeed, every addition to the religion of Islam will lead to hellfire. I adjure you as well as myself to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the best of your ability, fear Allah and don't die unless you are in a state of Islam. After this, I greet you all with the greeting of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and the blessing of Almighty Allah be with you all. I'd like to welcome you all for a classic reading. And this is a reading from Kitab Riyadh al-Salihin by Imam al-Nawawi rahmatullahi alayhi. This will be a reading from the book Garden of the Righteousness by Imam al-Nawawi. May Allah send mercy in his soul. And inshallah this is the third uh, episode concerning the subject of Hajj. And we're still dealing with this since we are in the month of the Hijjah. And since I just returned back from Hajj, so I felt that this is more uh, proper to deal with Hajj. And inshallah, we have a few hadith that we like to discuss it, inshallah, uh, today concerning Hajj. Uh, before I uh, read this hadith, uh, we have two terms, one is Hajj and one Umrah. And maybe some of you would like to know what's the difference between Hajj and Umrah. One main difference is that Hajj is obligatory, is must. Okay? As for the Umrah, there is a difference of opinions among the scholars. Is it obligatory or not? Okay? But is obligatory upon those who already initiated and started, they have to finish other different that Hajj have to be in specific time. al Hajj is a specific months. Shawwal, Dhul Qa'da, and the beginning of the Dhul Hijjah uh, until the 10th and Ayam Tashriq. 
Uh, so there is a specific time for it also. Uh, as Umrah, you can do it any, any, any day, any month. There's no any special time for it. Also, the Hajj require certain places more than the Umrah. You have to be in Arafah, you have to be in Muzdalifah, you have to stone the Jamarat in Mina, you have to spend the three nights or two nights after Eid in Mina. So this, there is a big difference between all these things. So here we have one hadith which is uh, reported by Abu Hurairah, may be Allah be pleased with him, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying, Al-Umrah ila Al-Umrah, kafaratun lima baynahuma. والحج المبرور ليس له جزاء إلا الجنة والحج المبرور ليس له جزاء إلا الجنة. So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is saying what the meaning is the performance of Umrah is an expiation for the sins committed between it and the previous Umrah and the reward of Hajj مبرور سواء Hajj acceptable Hajj is nothing but paradise. So, reflection on the hadith, Umrah to Umrah, expiation. So, the beauty of Islam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made means and way for forgiveness. For forgiveness. And this means in our means, in our ability, we don't have to make a blood sacrifice. There is no a man or half man, half God have to die for you to be forgiven. And it's so simple. Even sometimes by uttering one word, Astaghfirullah. Oh Allah, pardon me. Oh Allah, forgive me. So, we have many ways to cleanse ourselves. And one of them, that is Umrah. And here we see the beauty of Islam that give you many ways always to clean yourself. Daily, weekly, monthly, yearly. Daily as examples the five time prayers. Weekly the Jum'ah. You see? And it continues like this until it comes from a month to a month and from to year to year. So, you can have a wide angle how you can be forgiven and how you can be a clean person accepted by Allah. So one of the means is what? Making Umrah, performing Umrah after Umrah. Umrah after Umrah. When you make a Umrah last year and this year you go for another Umrah, so if this was two years or one year, whatever distance between them, Whatever sins have been committed, this will be a forgiveness. The next Umrah will come and cleans whatever sins that you had committed between the, this Umrah and the other Umrah. And the Prophet said, say, sound Hajj. And again, like we stated before, sound Hajj means sincerely for the pleasure of Allah, according the way of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. Free from committing sin, disputing, argument, sexual relation, you can get. So the Hajj al Mabrur has no reward other than Jannah. May Allah give it to us. Let's go to hadith number 1276. An Aisha radiallahu anha qalat, Qultu ya Rasulallah, nara al jihad afdala amal. Afdal al amal. أفلا نجاهد فقال لكن أفضل الجهاد حج مبرور رواه البخاري نهارتد عائشة من الله بليز was here I said O messenger of Allah we consider jihad as the best deed should we not then go for jihad Allah's messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said the best jihad for you women is Hajj. Now, res reflect. Two things here. Number one, Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, she understood that jihad is the highest level. 
and the best deed. This number one. Number two, she is eager to get the maximum reward. So she, number three, she came to ask the prophet. She did not say, okay, my intention is good and God knows my intention and that, that. okay. No, she came to ask the prophet, can I do this? Number four here, and this is what we need uh, for you to pay attention with me. The Prophet ﷺ diverted her from this. He said to her, if you're looking for the best deed for you as a woman, is the Hajj Mabrur. Okay? So now we can understand about this in the light of what you call women movement or liberation of women and all kind of things that we need to talk about. You see, if you want to please Allah, you need to obey Allah. People and society and TV and all these things is not going to help you. All right? So focus about pleasing Allah. Now, nowadays we see women, they go to the army, we're in fatigue, boot, marching, all these things. This is called al-mutarajjila. Called al-mutarajjila min al-nisa. And the Prophet ﷺ had cursed her. So don't tell me I understand that, oh, I want to make jihad, oh, I want to understand, defend my country, I, I, I. Don't give me any excuse. First, the priority, what Allah said, what the Prophet said. Don't, Islam means submission. Does not mean worshiping your own logic, doing what you like. Islam is doing what Allah said. What a woman, when you found, you understand, a woman, Wearing the same suit like a man. We're, no, no hijab anymore. Now she's wearing this cap and she's putting it to the side like a man. And she's marching. She's singing, you understand, like a man. One, two, one, two. This is called tarajjul. And the Prophet ﷺ had cursed this woman. Women that they make this form of tarajjul that mean imitation of men. This is prohibited in Islam. So please, my dear respected sister, give it up. It's not for you. Stay a woman and stay Amatullah. This much better for you in this life and the hereafter. Let's go for commercial break, inshallah, and we come back after this. We can continue. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Muhammad Said Adli. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Welcome back. All right, we're still talking about hajj. And we want to emphasize this issue again that we talk about it before. That there is a certain duties and there is a certain obligation can suit a man, doesn't suit a woman. And f for us, me and you, male or female, we have to accept. And appreciate what Allah gave us. So the jihad, Allah made this for men. And if women want to make jihad, the hajj is for them. This will be their jihad. But let's say as example, somebody will say, this man who's talking to, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Because some of the sahaba women, they went behind the Prophet ﷺ in jihad. Yes, but. Did we, did they change their clothes? 
Then they wear a boot and fatigue and march like this. They were in the back. They have their own jihad by giving water, medical care, things like this. But now taking a woman away from her husband and from her children and her family for six months of training and all kind of stuff. This is haram. We could not have victory by breaking the laws and the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me and you and all the Muslim guidance that we come back again to the book of Allah and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa But nevertheless, we have a good news for you, inshallah. And listen to this hadith, 1278, reported by Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him. That Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم قال عمرة في رمضان تعدل أو حجة معي تعدل حجة أو حجة معي. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is saying that performing عمرة during the month of Ramadan is equal to حج. Or he said equal to performance of حج with me. We understand that in certain countries that there is a selection and there is uh, many routines concerning who can and who could not. So, but if you could not go to Hajj, Alhamdulillah, there is a chance for you to go to Umrah. But here, if you're planning for Umrah, you should try get the maximum that you can from the blessing. What I mean? By doing it in Ramadan. Because the Prophet ﷺ says that when you make a Umrah in Ramadan, will be equal to Hajj. Equal in the reward, but does not replace Hajjat al Farida. Does not. Okay? Whenever you get a chance to go to make Hajj, you have to get to make the Hajj. At least once in your lifetime. Okay? This is what is obligatory. But it's not to say, okay, I want to Hajj, I want to Umrah during Ramadan. So now equal to Hajj, I don't have to perform Hajj. No, this is not right. Okay? Now the other narration or what is saying is that Hajj with the Prophet ﷺ. So regardless if it's equal to Hajj or Hajj with the Prophet, this is a great reward that we should be concerned and we should be eager to make Hajj with the Prophet by performing Umrah in Ramadan. Hadith number 1279. وعن امرأة قالت يا رسول الله إن فريضة الله على عباده في الحج أدركت أبي شيخا كبيرا لا يثبت على الراحلة أفحج عن قال نعم متفق عليه Narrated Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, that a woman came to the Prophet ﷺ and she said, O Messenger of Allah, obligation upon his slave, obligation upon his slave has been Allah's obligations, excuse me, Allah's obligations upon his slaves has came obligatory on my father in his old age. My father is very old man. Not capable of riding. May I perform Hajj in behalf of my father? The Prophet ﷺ, he told the hair, yes. So now we understand the basic rule and the originality. The originality of ibadah. وَأَن لَيْسَ لِلْإِنسَانِ إِلَّا مَا سَعَى You could not pray in behalf of somebody. You could not fast in behalf of somebody. You could not do any good deed in behalf of somebody. Okay? This is the originality. Exception here. This woman say, O Prophet of Allah, the obligations of Allah now happen while my father is an old man. He could not sit on the camel. He could not ride. He's an old man. So can I do this? Can I perform this in behalf of my father? Again, my brothers, again, my sister. Notice the Sahaba always coming asking. Aisha asking about, can she go for jihad? This woman coming to ask, can she make hajj? 
in behalf of her father. So always ask if you don't know. So now, because due to this fact that this person is an older person, the Prophet ﷺ had allowed to make the Hajj in behalf of this person. Now to make what they call it Hajj Badal, to act, to carry a duty in behalf somebody in Hajj, you, you yourself who are going to perform the Hajj, you have to be already performed Hajj previously in your own behalf. This is something very important as it came in Hadith of Shibrima. The issue here, this woman asked the Prophet about Hajj. So we don't want to stretch this. Oh, my father could not pray, let me pray in his behalf. Oh, my mother could not fast, let me fast. You could not do this. It's related to Hajj. You could not apply to everything else. Because Salah. The Prophet as example is saying, صلي قائمة فإن لم تستطع فقاعدا فإن لم تستطع فعلى جنب Pray standing up. If you could not sit down and pray, you could not lay down, you could not even pray with your eyes, laying down and Allahu Akbar, read Fatiha, Sami Allah Muhammadah, with your eyes. But you could not say, oh, honey, I'm tired, I'm sick, I have headache, I understand I have a bad day today, can you pray in Aisha for me because I have to go to sleep. You could not do this. So we don't want to make our own deen, our own system. The woman asked about her father being an older man, and she asked about hajj, so it applies to hajj. Don't take it to salah and fasting and zakah and things like this. Also in the next hadith, which hadith number 1280, that the man asked the Prophet وسلم, uh, concerning hajj and umrah, and the Prophet وسلم, said, Hujja an abika wa'tamir. Yes, you can make hajj in behalf of your father and the umrah. So we understand the permissibility of hajj or umrah to be in behalf of the father if he could not. Next hadith, which hadith number 1282 reported by Abdullah ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam laqiya raqban birrawha faqala man ilqawmu qalu al-muslimun qalu man anta qala rasulullah farafa'at imra'a sabiyan faqalat ali hadha hajj qala na'am walaki ajr subhanallah is again being repeated. People keep asking the Prophet, learning from the Prophet. The same thing will apply to me and to you. If we don't know, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask the people of knowledge. Ask the scholars. Ask the learned one. Don't take a book and read and say, oh, the book is say. Because you are not qualified to understand this book. So it's very important that we ask and learn. What I want you to pay attention here, that the Prophet ﷺ, he, when he made this group of people, he asked them who they are. Because the Prophet ﷺ was going from Medina to Mecca to make the Hajj. And a lot of Muslims, the Prophet ﷺ did not even see them before, they came to make Hajj. It was not only the people in Medina, a lot of people came from different places. So when the Prophet made this group, he said, who are you? They said, we are what? Al-Muslimun. Okay? So what I want to say, we have one name. We don't have many titles. Okay? Everybody making his own organization and his own institution. And these people, you understand, Ikhwan. And this is people is... Uh, Ash'ariya, and this people uh, is uh, Salafiya, and this people is uh, Ahmadiyya, and this people Maturidiyya, and the people is there is a simple name, and one name, Millata Abikum Ibrahim, who was Sammakum al-Muslimin, we don't have any other titles, 
And people come ask a question each other. Are you a Salafi? Are you a Ziz? Are you a Zat? What it is? Where is this? Where did you learn this? Questioning people, you understand? Are you a Salafi? Or are you a, a, a Wahhabi? Or are you... All these titles, we don't need titles. We need one thing called Islam. Islam and this it. The deen, the name of it is Islam. Those who follow the deen is Muslim. How do you understand the deen? Allah said, the Prophet said, the Sahaba understood. Other than this, we don't have a special title. And we make the title to become a way to separate each other. Distinguish each other from each other. This is not right. This is not right. We are Muslims. Our deen is Islam. And we follow the book of Allah. The authentic sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the understanding of the Sahaba. The hadith is talking about the woman asking the Prophet, she carrying a baby, making hajj. Will be hajj accepted from this? He said, yes. And for you also, you will be getting the reward. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the correct understanding about our deen. Make us from those people who inshallah will go for hajj, seeking the reward of Allah and seeking the forgiveness of Allah and that Allah give us, me and you, is sound hajj. Until I see you next time. I'm your host, Muhammad Said Adli from Columbia, South Carolina. Thank you for watching. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك عند الله نزبست